Ever wondered how a plane can glide through the sky at a pace that seems incredibly slow, just above its stall speed? Welcome, aviation enthusiasts, to the world of slow flight. This fascinating concept is a cornerstone of aviation, playing a critical role during takeoff and landing, where the aircraft operates at low air speeds with a high angle of attack, making it vulnerable to stalling. Slow flight is a delicate dance in the sky, a careful balance of speed and angle of attack to keep the plane aloft without tipping into a stall. It's a bit like walking a tightrope, where every adjustment could mean the difference between staying airborne or taking an unexpected nosedive. In the realm of slow flight, we're dealing with what's known as flying on the backside of the power curve. This is the point where maintaining airspeed becomes a matter of careful pitch control and power is required to keep the plane at the right altitude. It's the opposite of what you might expect during normal cruising flight, and it's what makes slow flight so intriguing. But it's not just about managing speed and altitude. Slow flight also involves dealing with induced drag, which increases significantly as the aircraft's angle of attack rises to maintain lift at low air speeds. This requires large power inputs, or a reduction in angle of attack to prevent further deceleration. And let's not forget about speed instability. When flying below the maximum lift to drag ratio, the aircraft exhibits speed instability, meaning airspeed will continue to decrease without appropriate pilot action. This is due to the increased induced drag on the backside of the power curve. Finally, control responsiveness becomes a key factor. During slow flight, maintaining altitude becomes more challenging due to less airflow over the control surfaces. Pilots may experience a mushy or sloppy feeling on the controls, requiring larger control movements for the same response. So you see, slow flight isn't just about taking it easy. It's about mastering a complex collection of skills and understanding the intricate aerodynamics at play. Now that we've introduced the concept of slow flight, let's delve deeper into its key components. Imagine driving up a steep hill in a car. You need to maintain a certain speed to keep from rolling back, right? In aviation, we call this flying on the backside of the power curve. So, what exactly is this power curve? Think of it as a graph that plots the amount of power needed to maintain flight at a certain speed. As the speed decreases, more power is needed to maintain flight. We call this the backside of the power curve. It's like trying to climb that steep hill in your car. You need more power to keep from rolling back. Now why is this important in slow flight? Well, when an aircraft is flying on the backside of the power curve, it's at a speed where any increase in the angle of attack increase in load factor or reduction in power could cause a stall warning. That's why pilots must use a different strategy to maintain control. In normal flight, pilots control airspeed with power and altitude with pitch. But when flying on the backside of the power curve, this relationship flips. Pitch controls airspeed and power controls altitude. Why is this? Well, when the aircraft is flying slowly, it's at a high angle of attack, which means the nose is pitched up. If the pilot wants to fly slower, they must pitch the nose up even more, but this decreases the airspeed. So to maintain the same airspeed, the pilot must add power. Similarly, if the pilot wants to descend without increasing speed, they must reduce power. But this decreases the lift, causing the aircraft to descend. To maintain the same altitude, the pilot must pitch the nose up, which slows the aircraft down. So, Flying on the backside of the power curve essentially means maintaining a delicate balance to avoid stalling. It's a dance between pitch and power where each move affects the other. As you can see, understanding the backside of the power curve is crucial for mastering slow flight. Have you ever tried to walk against a strong wind? In slow flight, pilots face a similar challenge called induced drag. This is a fundamental concept in aerodynamics, where the aircraft is essentially working against itself. As an aircraft flies, its wings create lift, which is the upward force that keeps it airborne. But this lift also creates a downside, a resistance known as induced drag. Think of induced drag as the aerodynamic equivalent of walking uphill. The higher the hill, or in our case, the greater the angle of attack, the harder it is to keep going. In slow flight, as the aircraft's angle of attack increases to maintain lift at low air speeds, the induced drag also significantly escalates. This is like trying to walk up a steep hill. The steeper it gets, the harder you have to work. This increased resistance requires a balancing act from the pilot. 
To prevent further deceleration, the pilot has two main options, make large power inputs or reduce the angle of attack. The first option is like deciding to run up the hill, using more energy to overcome the incline. The second is akin to finding a less steep path, reducing the effort needed to climb. But it's not as simple as picking one option and sticking with it. The pilot must continually adjust these factors based on the aircraft's performance and the flying conditions. This is similar to how you might adjust your pace and path when walking against a gusty wind, constantly changing your strategy to keep moving forward. In essence, dealing with induced drag is like walking against the wind, requiring constant adjustments to keep moving forward. It's a dance where the pilot, the aircraft and the forces of physics all need to be in sync, a testament to the skill and understanding required in the art of slow flight. Flying a plane in slow flight is like balancing on a tightrope, it requires constant attention to prevent speed instability and handle decreased control responsiveness. But what are these concepts and how do they affect an aircraft's performance in slow flight? Let's dive in. Speed instability is a characteristic of slow flight, particularly when flying below the maximum lift to drag ratio, also known as LD max. In this regime, the aircraft tends to decelerate continuously due to the increased induced drag that comes with flying on the backside of the power curve. This instability means that, without appropriate pilot action, airspeed will continue to decrease. It's like trying to walk up a downward moving escalator. You have to keep moving forward to prevent being carried backwards. This is where the pilot's skill comes into play. Constant adjustments are necessary to maintain the delicate balance between airspeed and altitude, ensuring that the aircraft doesn't approach the dreaded stall speed. Now let's talk about control responsiveness. In slow flight, the aircraft's controls become less responsive. Why? This is due to less airflow over the control surfaces as the aircraft's speed decreases. Pilots may describe the controls as feeling mushy or sloppy. This means that larger control movements are necessary to achieve the same response that would be expected at higher speeds. It's like trying to turn a heavy steering wheel. You need more effort to get the desired result. This decreased control responsiveness makes maintaining altitude more challenging requiring the pilot to be even more attentive and precise. It's not just about balancing on that tightrope anymore, it's about doing so while juggling a set of balls. So, slow flight is a real test of a pilot's skill and understanding of an aircraft's aerodynamics. But it's this very challenge that makes mastering slow flight so important for operations like takeoff and landing, where the stakes are highest and the margin for error is smallest. Slow flight might seem like a simple concept, but as we've seen, it involves quite a bit of complexity. Let's take a moment to revisit the key points we've covered in this discussion. We began by exploring the idea of flying on the backside of the power curve. This is where the aircraft operates at a speed just above its stall speed, making it vulnerable to stalling. In this regime, pitch controls airspeed and power maintains altitude, a stark contrast to normal cruise flight. Next, we delved into the concept of induced drag, as an aircraft's angle of attack increases to maintain lift at low airspeeds, so too does induced drag. This requires large power inputs or a reduction in angle of attack to prevent further deceleration. The balance here is delicate but critical. We then tackled the issue of speed instability. When flying below the maximum lift to drag ratio or LD max, the aircraft exhibits speed instability. This means airspeed will continue to drop without appropriate pilot intervention. This is due to the increased induced drag on the backside of the power curve. Finally, we highlighted the challenge of control responsiveness during slow flight. With less airflow over the control surfaces, maintaining altitude becomes more challenging and the controls may feel mushy or sloppy. This requires larger control movements for the same response. In essence, slow flight is about training pilots to handle their aircraft at speeds just above stalling. It's a crucial skill, especially during operations like takeoff and landing, where the aircraft operates at low airspeeds with a high angle of attack. And it's not just about speed, but about maintaining balance and control in the face of complex aerodynamic factors. So there you have it. An in-depth look at slow flight in aviation. Remember, it's not about speed, but about maintaining balance and control. Until next time, keep soaring high aviation enthusiasts.